Hello. We didn't come along for a ride in the Series 3 Land Rover 88-inch, 1983. Land Rover of many colours. There is swearing and there is sports mix. Be warned. I'll see you there. Hello, hello folks, old Twit Talks cars. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, before we start, I just wanted to dispel the myth that you're always hearing about that you can't use sports mix in your filming routines when you're doing YouTube. For me, it's a great um, untalked about issue of the day. So I just want to show you this. So yeah, I do use my sports mix to prop up my camera because I've never got the right kit with me, obviously. Um, and I don't really like the yellow ones, so there you go. Um, thank you, Maynard Spassets, although obviously other chewy sweets are available. Anyway, on with the businesses today. Um, I've seen a lot on uh, YouTube, excuse me, I'm on a red one. Um, bear with me, I'll come back to you. So here I am, sorry about that. Yeah, you hear a lot on uh, YouTube and you see a lot of reviews of the um, new Land Rover Defender. Um, and whilst I like the previous Defender, I'm not completely sold on the brand new one. So I thought I'd redress that a little bit by um, going out today with you in a real Land Rover. So even before the Defender, we had the Series Land Rovers, and today I'm in my trusty Series 3 2.25 litre petrol, 88 inch wheelbase, uh, marine blue of hmm, various shades of marine blue, shall we say, and a couple of different shades of limestone. So we'll have a little walk around. So what I was planning to do was really have a bit of a walk around and then we'll go for a drive because I see on the forums quite a lot of people going what's what's a series three like to drive um, and uh, I think it's a good time potentially with all the heat and light over the new Defender um, to take you around this I think for me just to start before you do that because you know I like to ramble on the big the big difference between the series and Defender and the original Defender and the new Defender, I would say, is that the Defender, and particularly the series, were cars that were built for the farm, um, built for an off-road environment, and the compromise element was you could sort of drive them on the road a bit if you're a, if you're a masochist. Uh, I think it's the other way around, really, with all modern SUVs, and probably no different with the new Defender. I know I know the people at the Land Rover will uh, be throwing things at me, but it's fine because they don't watch, so it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I would argue that that is a road car that's compromised a bit for uh, off-road use. This is the other way around. This car was designed originally from the first Land Rover for off-road and military use, and oh by the way if you had to go from one field on your farm to another field on your farm on the road then it probably wouldn't kill you 
So that's the big difference for me. So we're going to take a walk around this vehicle and I'll show you its little quirks and foibles. And we're also going to take you out for a bit of a drive and I'm going to try and point out to you, um, I guess, what are the quite substantial differences between this and a modern car. So so here she is in all her finery, 88 inches of pure class, various versions of marine blue, limestone wheels and sides, and the roof is, shall we call, light limestone. We've got a couple of different iterations of the marine blue here. Put a new wing on it, because it, even for Land Rover standards, the wing had um, seen some much better days. Yeah, I suspect before my ownership, the wing had had one of those low speed lock up accidents that Land Rover owners will be familiar with, where you stop and then you slide ever so gently into something and it, it just comes to rest at about one mile an hour on your wing uh, and it crumples it all up. So <clears throat> we had a new wing put on or a second hand wing put on, which does look better but obviously we painted it marine blue uh, and the rest of the paint <coughs> is original. So there's a little bit of a colour difference. Well, I say with the rest of the paint, the, the, the bonnet's clearly been brush painted at some point, but that's all part of the Land Rover charm. So we've got the nice little spot lamps that someone's put on, black bumper, original number plates. Got the freewheeling hubs here. So again, that's a nice little refinement. Bit of acceptable Land Rover bodywork damage there. This side's a little bit better, I'd say, in terms of at least it's vaguely, the body at least, is vaguely the same colour. So what have we done on this? Well, quite a bit, actually. It's had a new clutch, which we didn't do, but I had a nice gentleman do that. That was about probably a thousand miles ago. <coughs> He's had new springs and shocks all round. He's got a brand new um, OEM exhaust system. Uh, had a tiny bit of welding for the MOT on the, you can see maybe at the front there on the um, dumb irons at the end. Um, <coughs> what else? Uh, interior's all been done, so we've got new seats. We've done lots of things, I just can't remember now. Anyway, let's have a look in the back while I have a think. Yeah, so there's your um, station wagon body. We've got a tow bar with the electrics. The actual end of the tow bar is under the seat. <coughs> Here are the little seats that are absolutely pointless. Spare wheel, interior. I mean, it doesn't take long to show you around one of these. This is this is awful, but I've yet to do anything about it. I probably won't. Open bottle here. Oh dear. Not a surf bus, is it? To be honest. Uh, yeah, so that's it. She's a nice little thing. Uh, 83. Well, let's look under the bonnet. Why not? A beautifully painted bonnet. It's quite hard to do single-handed. Hang on a sec. Now something else I did do is I put the um, oil bath air filter back in. There was a K&N stuck on the top of the car there, which I didn't like particularly, and it was noisy. Um, I like how you got your firing sequence on the... Uh, One, three, four, two, love it. So not much in the way of electronics here. There's your distributor. Oil bath air filter. Radiator, nice big battery needed. Yeah, that's it. Original Land Rover plate. Door cards even on the back door, look at that. I mean, it's the height of luxury. Rubber massage. Now, the other thing you'll notice, particularly if you're like me and you're on the slightly taller side, 
I'm 62, is you wouldn't want to go a lot of miles in that because that is your seat back. That's as far as it goes because obviously you've got a bulkhead behind you and that is a little bit tight for the larger gent. <clears throat> so you do feel like you're uh, hunched up in there somewhat. So this is what I mean about not loads of space. I mean, it's okay. I've worn some more suits. Oh dear, it's been a horrendous sports mix related accident. Anyway, don't worry, I'll eat my way through them. My blacks are the favourite. Do you remember when they were licorice? I certainly do. Anyway, so here we go. Here's what greets you when you jump into the Series 3 Land Rover. Refreshingly straightforward. Speedo, temperature and fuel, a couple of warning lights, and then your horn, indicators, lights, and a couple of switches there, which are your headlights on, your interior light, your fan, and your uh, windscreen wipers. And down there, you've got your heater controls. Now, here's a myth for you. Series 3 myth is, oh, it must be really cold in the Land Rover. No, the heat is remarkably good. We've got, we've got a manual choke. This rarely needs the choke. You've got a couple of controls here, which are um, fog lights and hazard warning. And then you've got some um, auxiliary lights here, some auxiliary, so we've got interior lamps that we fitted, which just are a bit more effective than what was there before, which was nothing. And uh, what else we've got? We've got work lamps at the rear. So we'll have a look at those when we get out. Um, and down here, this is the knob central, as I like to call it. So the red one is your high and low range. The yellow is your um, four-wheel drive, which will engage automatically if you're going to low range. Um, and the most important, I would argue, for road use at least, is the overdrive uh, lever. Don't be disturbed at the arrow. It points off to there. It is actually just a forward and back. You have to deploy the clutch to use it. Um, as I've probably already rambled on about, you can only really use it in third and fourth. And it adds about 10 miles an hour gear. Um, so for road use, it's a bit better. It's not transformational. Um, so that's it. We've got three seats here. I'm sitting in one. One obviously for the sports mix. One for your tripod. Um, there's two bits of, of safety equipment in the Land Rover. Um, one of which is standard fit which in 1983 was the inertia real seat belt and one has been fitted by me which is the fire extinguisher now i'm not suggesting that there's any reason to think that this is going to burst into flames at any time but i do like it it's just appropriate to the land rover and if you ever do carry passengers they really appreciate that sense of impending doom that they get when they see a massive fire extinguisher between the knees. Um, so that's it really, there's very little else to, to say. The uh, spare is here, so my spare is in the back here. So I think that's the interior taken care of. The other thing I'd say is, you know, in the best traditions of gear, I've got door cards in this um, wagon should obviously highly sought after and make a huge difference to really absolutely nothing. Uh, a couple of things you'll notice on jumping into a series Land Rover on the road is the first thing is everything is obviously unpowered. So you've got unpowered steering, you've got no assistance on the brakes, um, you've got no assistance on anything really. So it is a physical um, exertion, particularly steering. It is heavy. Um, and it is imprecise on the steering, and I think they were always like that. The second is how short the gears are. <clears throat> so I'm in third. So I'm doing 10 miles an hour, really. You need to change at that point. Third's probably good to 35, and then there's a massive gap. And, and the car drops in a hole, and then you've got 
got full. So really your first three gears are off-road gears. Now I'm doing about just under 15 in four, and that's really as fast as you'd want to go in four. Luckily, we can talk about this when it's a bit quieter, I've got a beautiful ferry overdrive on here, which I'd say if you're going to use your Series 3 on the road, is a necessity. So if I slip her into an overdrive seamlessly, there we go. So you can use overdrive on third and fourth. Now we're creeping up towards 60, and she feels a lot less stressed. That's 55. To be honest, even with the overdrive, I'd argue that 55 is going to be a sensible cruising speed for you. She will do 60 in overdrive. Probably a bit more, maybe 65, but it does get pretty noisy. And you do burn more fuel than Concord. So that's about 60. So it's pretty noisy, and this is with the standard exhaust on. So we've got a very new standard bit exhaust on this, so this is pretty much factory in terms of spec. So there's nothing um, non standard really on this car, particularly. <clears throat> so, where does that leave us? In summary, what can I tell you about the Series 3 Land Rover? Well, today's not the day for some off roading, I'm afraid. I need to find a place to do that safely. But I will do that, and we'll go and see this car in its natural habitat, which isn't on the road. Uh, so I'd say comfortable? No. A viable daily driver? Well, if the daily drives half a mile down a muddy track, then yes. Other than that, you have to not like yourself very much, to be honest. It's a very heavy to drive. Steering's naturally imprecise, which is sort of what you want on a proper off-road though, but you don't want that steering wheel fighting around in your hands when you're off road. However, do I love it? Yeah, I absolutely love it. What's not to like about driving a Series 3 Land Rover? Anyway folks, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry I've not been very active lately. I have got a page job at the moment. So that makes playing around with cars a lot, a lot harder. But I really appreciate your support. I think the last time I looked, I had the sum total of 192 subscribers, which frankly, I know for some people they'd go, ha <laughs> ridiculously low, but I'm absolutely thrilled. I mean, to be honest, 10 people would have, uh, would have um, blown my socks off. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, long may it continue. I will post more um, as time goes on, but it might be a little less often than previously. But anyway, keep safe, for God's sake, that's the main thing, and I look forward to seeing you soon.